Black against, ooh, 2400. Okay, this one might might be very competitive. So let's go with a Karo Khan. This guy is 2752 um, Blitz, so he's good. All right. Let's go with a Tardic Arakaro. And uh, I'm gonna go for my main line. He takes F6. This is what I play in Blitz often. And this is a very fashionable system where we eventually, we develop the bishop to d6, then we castle. This is all theory. And this bishop comes out to g4. So this is all normal. And now the knight comes out to d7. I'm, I've talked about this setup before. I don't want to take too much time in the opening because clearly we have a very, very strong opponent. Okay, h3. So we go bishop h5. And generally, white, I mean, if white allows the bishop to come to g4 as he did, We've essentially solved all our opening problems. Okay, so now we go knight d7. And then queen c7, rook e8. I mean, it's a very easy system to play. The pieces don't even have that many squares to go to. Yeah, 2300s are good. I mean, this guy is clearly, clearly, clearly a strong player. Okay, he goes c4. All right, so th there's a couple of ways that we can go about playing this line. In general, I like the idea of connecting the rooks and also creating a little battery here. Uh, we can also go c5, but that allows him to create a protective passer with d5. Although in that position, we could go knight e5. So I like the move c5 as well. Uh, but in such positions, I don't like to play very committally. And I think we should reserve the move c5 for later. We're not afraid of him going c5 because after queen c7, c5 will have bishop f4. So let's start by playing queen c7 and then c, okay, g4 instantly. Well, that doesn't leave us much of a choice. Bishop g6, c5. Okay, bishop f4 is forced. I mean, there's clearly something I'm missing here because um, this guy is playing very quickly here. I mean, obviously he's weakened the king side tremendously. So I don't really believe in this for white, but there might be something concrete that I am missing. Yeah, rook e7, of course, is a possibility, but I can even play rook ad, and I'm not too afraid of just a, a single rook landing on e7. He's going to need more than that to, to scare me. All right, h takes g6, creating the pawn cube. Obviously not f takes g6, which would be tremendously weakening. Rook e7. All right, so this is what he was aiming for. I'm not too scared of this. The knight has no squares, which is a little bit concerning, but fortunately we can defend the knight with a rook. Why do we go with this rook? Because we want the other rook to defend f7. If he goes queen b3 right now, if we had gone rook fd8, then queen b3 would have followed and we would have been in massive trouble because to defend that f pawn, we would have had to return with a rook to f8 and then the knight would have been left unprotected. All right, you know what I mean, lawful, lawful. Okay, queen e2. All right, so if we can solve the problem of the rook, I think black will be better due to our um, superior structure in white's weak squares. So the plan here is to try to break free of the chains. So how do we how do we do that? Um, it's not so simple. It's not so simple. Let me think for a second. Yeah, we can go g5, we can go f5. The problem with f5 is he goes g5. f5 doesn't quite cut it. 5 doesn't quite cut it. Um, I have an idea. It's not the greatest idea in the world, but it's an idea. The idea is to go a5 and then to go b6 after that. Uh, and the reason that I don't want to go b6 immediately is because of b4. White would preserve the bind on our position. So first I want to go a5 to stop b4, and then on the next move I want to go b6. Um, I don't love my position, to be completely honest, but I think if we can get b6, then we'll be fine. All right, so here, even taking the queen should be considered, because if we take the queen and he takes with the pawn, then we go rook fe8, 
probably the end game is slightly worse for us, but closer to equality than to anything. Um, we can also drop the queen back to b8, but then he goes rook a e1. And if we go b6, white can go b3. Takes, takes. Very concerning position there, so probably we should take the queen. Probably we should take the queen. I mean, it's not a great position there, but... Yeah, we're getting slightly outplayed here. Queen back to b8. Yeah, this guy... This guy played Hikaru and stuff, so he's clearly very, very strong. No, I want to go queen b. I don't want to take the queen. I'll explain why after the game, but I think this is a better chance. Thank you, Cronius, for the uh, for the five gifted. I appreciate it. All right. So if only we could go get rook f8, and we would be totally fine, because the knight would be able to park on f8. Man, very strong. b6. Okay, let's try to break free. No, I have not lost on the speed run. Um, this is potentially my first loss if he continues to play as powerfully as he has. Okay, we'll see. Now, the position remains quite solid, I think. I don't see a way for him to break through. The, the move I'm worried about is b3 because we are threatening to take on c5 and then to take the pawn on b2. Okay. Okay, let me think. No, he, he's obviously not sniping. He's just found the move. Let me think. Okay, probably we should take and go queen before. Take and go queen before to attack the pawn. Okay. So maybe it's not so bad actually. C1. No, it actually is bad. Okay, maybe f5 takes takes knight d4. Ah, uh, maybe knight b8 is interesting to open the d open the d file, but then he goes rook c4, queen e3. No, that's all very bad. Jeez. Okay, worst comes to worst, we can go knight e5 here. I really don't like that. We can try the move queen a3. Okay, let's try queen a3. Rook c2. Okay, maybe now knight b8. Then he goes knight d4. Okay. Or does he want to trap my queen with a rookie four, rook a4? Wow. That is insane. Gosh, I feel like an idiot. Let's go a4 maybe? Let's try a4. Yeah, we have to try a4 to open up some territory on the queen side. And obviously this is bad, but I'll do what I can here. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, it's hard to estimate his level so far, but obviously so far he's playing at a GM level. Or I'm just playing below my level, but I, I don't even really know what I did wrong, to be completely honest. Takes, takes, rook d2. Yeah, here I was thinking knight e5. Here I was thinking knight e5, and maybe I can squeeze out a draw, although it's doubtful. Because if knight b8, amazingly, he's got takes, takes, rook e8, winning my knight. Um, which basically means I have to go knight e5. And hope for the best. Well, not random stuff. I mean, sack a pawn and try to actually pull out a draw here is what we're going to do. No, it's not hope chess. I mean, we have to... We have to trade as many pieces as possible here and then 
My king, the only thing that's working in my favor is that the king is kind of safe. Okay, we take. If he takes, we take. We can primo this. Yeah, 2400 in rapid is really high, but it's, I mean, it should not be a GM level, I think. So let's see. Rook takes e5. All right, so here's the situation. If we play queen takes a2, then he goes rook e8 check. And then we trade on e8, and the queen comes back and takes on c6. So I thought rook e5 was a mistake, because I can actually give this check first. I think I can give this check first, and then take on a2 on the next move. And I actually didn't see how he can make progress in 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 with respect to my king. Because if he gives me a check on e8, I just go king h7. And it, I mean, if his queen had a way to get onto the eighth rank in one move, I think he would mate me, but I don't see how he gets that done. So maybe we're holding on here. I don't know. I'm optimistic though. Now he absolutely does not give, uh, does not give up the impression of a cheater. He's definitely legit. I mean, I'm 99% sure. He's not, I'm not, I don't get that sense from him. He's just clearly extremely strong. I, that, that's all there is to it. Okay, so queen, we got to calculate queen a1. Queen a1, there, there, wait, let me calculate. Rook g1, no, that's got to be good, right? Queen a3, queen g1, king f4, queen g2. I think I have at least a draw there. So queen a1 is what I'm currently currently mulling over but it probably also doesn't work it's going there there yeah maybe i shouldn't do that how else can i defend i can go rook d5 then he takes it i can go rook d2 maybe but i don't really like that either yeah maybe rook d2 is forced Hmm. Okay, we can also risk it with queen a1. Yeah, let's risk it. Let's risk it for the biscuit with queen a1. I'll explain everything after the game, but I gotta move. Let's go queen a1. If rook e8, king h7, and if queen takes f7 there, I start checking him, rook g1, etc. Okay, Philip, no computer evals, come on. Okay. This is obviously a highly concerning position, but also at the same time, uh, his king is also very weak here. So, okay, king h7. Queen f7, okay, so we go for that line, rook g1 check is forced. King f3, queen d1 check. And maybe I have a perpetual there, I'm not entirely positive. King h2, rook h1, okay. King g3, oh my god, does he want to go? He wants to go to h4, doesn't he? Which I, of course, I didn't see at all. My gosh, what, an, what a defensive idea. Queen c3 is possible. No, but the, ah, but yeah, maybe it is possible. Rookie three, but then he doesn't have that check anymore. Yeah, rookie three, but then I can take on c5 maybe. And I should be okay. I don't know. Wait, does he have f3? Oh my gosh. He might have f3 though. Unreal. And I have no check, so my king and queen is dominated. Okay. What is he threatening? Queen g8, queen h8, h4. Yeah, it's lost. It's just lost.
Yeah, well done. I don't think I have a defense. I mean, maybe there's something, but I don't see it. Yeah, rook g1, he goes king up. I missed this move f3 completely. Okay, I have to do this. King h4, whoa. Wait, but this allows... Maybe queen f6. Now I'm still more or less in the game. If he's not careful, he can get checkmated here. I guess rookie six wins. Damn. Still probably winning for him. Jesus. Okay. That's a very strange king h4 move because he was just winning on the spot there, king h2. Damn it. Yeah, I was hoping he would uh, get himself mated, but he didn't. Why did I do that? I, I should have probably, I don't know what I should have done. Who knows? Yeah, H5 and there's no stalemate, unfortunately. Incredible. I mean, unless, huh. I can get a five in, but okay, let's see how. Rook f5 wins. I mean, he just played incredibly well. I don't know what to say. Yeah. Yeah, this is over. I guess the speed run lasts a little bit longer. Oh, okay. Wait, 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 I'm still lost. I'm still lost. That's the fuck, that's the, f that's the amazing thing. I'm still probably lost. This is ridiculous. This is absurd. I like how he just like didn't even flinch. This is still probably at least a draw, probably a loss. Wow. <laughs> I like how he gained rating from this game. Yeah, it's, 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 a, that's a position. It's a draw. That was very dirty, but you got to try everything. It's online chess. Oh, of course, in my eyes, I lost that game. Okay, rookie seven. <laughs> okay, let's analyze. Um, I mean, of course, the accuracy is, oh my God, 99.3 to 98.2. Oh my God, that's, that's pretty crazy. No, 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 I, this guy was legit. I mean, I, I didn't, I completely did not get the sense that I'm playing a machine. I just got the sense that I'm playing a very strong human. 
Uh, we'll analyze with an engine, obviously, but um, I'm also human. Like, I, I make mistakes. The point of the speedrun is not to convince anybody that I am... To convince anybody that I am some sort of superhuman. Okay. Do Skellico, thank you for the prime. No, there's no chance he's another speedrunning it. So, by the way, I didn't want to misrepresent the Tardic Hour. Um, I didn't want to misrepresent... I have played him before. I didn't know that. Um, I made a very crucial mistake here. Um, and the mistake was what I would call chess-related procrastination. So, do you guys remember what move I refrained from playing in this position? Do you remember what move I refrained from playing in this position? Yeah, so c5, please, and I'm not going to keep repeating this, but it goes without saying that um, baseless accusations are disgusting and shame on you if you go around saying, like, this guy is obviously a cheater, or, like, if he beat Hikaru once, he must be a cheater. I wish people knew how ridiculous they sounded when they say that. I'm also not trying to imply that I'm that he's cheating when I say that he's playing extremely well, which he is. Um... And as you guys know, if I suspect someone, I'm pretty open about it, but I don't do it without looking at the engine moves. Checking the accuracy is not enough. It's possible to play a 99% game in a 10 minute game. But every time that your like streamer of choice does not win a game, it, it's not right to resort to just like accusations. Okay. Um, So c5 would have been the best move. In fact, it's the only move to keep equality. c4, c5. And if white goes d5, then after knight e5, black is actually better. Now let's focus on the analysis. Um, and the point here is that if white plays bishop e2, you play bishop takes f3, and white has no good way to recapture. gf3 is obviously destructive, and bishop takes f3 blunders the pawn to c4. Um... So c5 would have preserved a decent position for black. Unfortunately, I didn't realize the urgency of this moment. And queen c7 was a mistake. I completely underestimated his idea. g4 is indeed the best move. And um, I this idea caught me completely off guard. I didn't understand the significance of the c7 square, which is, this is a pretty rare idea in this line, g4, c5, rook e7. This was incredibly good. And now it's plus over minus. So bishop g6. Yeah, queen b8, but now look at this rogue. Now queen b8, I, I think there's bishop f5 attacking the knight. So the point of queen c7 is to keep the rooks connected. Okay, g4, bishop g6, c5. The problem with this for black is that despite my control over the weak f4 square, no, but it's not the space is not the problem. In this line, black lacks some space. That's one of the drawbacks of this Karakon line, but that's not the problem. The problem is that this knight has absolutely no prospects. Um, Exagian, thank you. The knight can't go out to b6, it can't go to e5, it can't go to c5, and that's what kills me because the bishops are traded and we're only left with one minor piece each. And when your only minor piece has no squares, that's a huge problem. Okay, so bishop takes f4, queen takes f4, and... It, that problem outweighs my very powerful queen on f4. I thought that this queen would somehow compensate for the bad knight, but it actually doesn't. Okay, so this is all correct. Bishop g6, hg6. The computer still doesn't show a big advantage for white. a5 is the top move. Uh, so I found a really strong idea here. I don't know how I find... Apparently I made a brilliant move. I don't know how to find that. So a5 is the only move, apparently, to, to limit white's advantage. Um, again, what is the idea of a5? So I want... What is black's goal in this position? Black's... Um, black's biggest goal, black's only goal, is to somehow activate the knight on d7. And it's not necessarily to get it to b6. To get it somewhere, I mean, ideally you would get it to d5, but that's impossible. Now, what's stopping the knight from coming to b6? Um... Well, it's the pawn on c5, which is controlling that square. So that's why I wanted to play b6. But unfortunately, white plays b4. And if you play a5, white plays a3. This is a typical kind of sequence, and you haven't made any progress. Okay. So a5. 
stopping b4, and I want to play b6 on the next move. And if white plays a3, what should black do here? Okay, I'm going to time people out for making off-topic remarks. Yes, a4. Stopping b4 due to the on passant. This is also a very typical idea. You put the pawn on a4, and then you play b6 on the next move. So Orange Sting asks, was it possible to go for a plan like g5, f5? So again, the problem with f5 is that white goes g5 and stops knight f6. So an idea that was thrown out by the chat was g5. Let's say rook e1 and now f5. Yeah, it was possible, but white has this move queen e3. And an end game is quite terrible for black because then you're just left with this terrible knight. You can't move it. And uh, it was an interesting idea, but I don't think it quite solved the problems of the position. Okay, so a5, queen e3 is excellent. And now queen b8 is also good. And rook a1 activating the last piece. b6, b3. And even though I've managed to open up the position a little bit, um, it's still very, very unpleasant because I still haven't solved the problem of my knight. But I, I ha what I have done is acquired the e5 square for my knight. So potentially I can put my knight on e5 even at the cost of a pawn. Okay, so queen b4, rook c1, and I think, according to the engine, yeah, queen b4 is the top move. And according to the engine, what I should have done is something very clever here. I should have gone back to b8. Um, again, really the only move to preserve a reasonable position. Now, what's the idea of this move? Well, the idea of this move, of course, is to play rook f to e8 and get this damn rook out of e7. And obviously, if white plays rook e1, then we are repeating the position. I go back to b4 and hit the c5 pawn again. So essentially, I'm going after two ideas at the same time. I'm hitting the c5 pawn in order to get the rook off of the e-file, and then I'm coming back to b8 in order to prepare rook f e8 um, to get the rook off of e7. Um, I just didn't spot that idea. I kind of went after his queen side without fully realizing that uh, there's not a lot of prospects there. Okay, um, so rook c2 to defend the pawn and now a4. There was one interesting detail. I almost played, I almost played knight b8, which actually loses on the spot. And the reason it loses on the spot is quite a beautiful idea. And that would be rook e4. And the rook is coming to a4, and there is simply no stopping. That queen on a3 is totally boxed in and trapped. Whatever black does, white goes rook e4. Sorry, rook a4, and the queen is lost. So this is quite, quite amazing. Um, there is simply nothing that black can do here. That's why I had to play a4. That's why I had to play a4. He saw that for sure. Yeah, he, he definitely, um, he definitely intended that when he played rook c2. B takes a4 is actually really strong. B takes a4, queen takes a4, and rook d2. And again, there's a problem. Because now, if I go back to b8, white wins a piece. Rook takes d8, rook takes d8, rook e8 check, takes takes, and there's a fork. And that's it. I have to go knight e5 and give up a pawn. So knight takes e5, f takes e5, rook takes d8, rook takes d8, rook takes d1, rook takes e5. Okay. So... There's another issue here, which is that queen takes a2 fails again to rook e8 check. And this resulting endgame is completely lost for black. These types of endgames, queen and three on one side, and then one pawn on the other side, is generally just lost. Because as long as his queen stays on this diagonal, uh, and the king parks itself on g2, black will never have any kind of checks on that long diagonal. And so the pawn is basically free to go. This is losing. Um, that's a good thing to know, by the way. These types of endgames are rarely salvageable. That is why, and I thought that I was out of the woods here, that is why I played rook d1 check first, and then queen takes a2. And according to the engine, I managed to essentially equalize, even though we've all played essentially the top moves. So here, he goes queen f3, which is an incredibly strong move. Um, I underestimated this move. I assumed that he would give me a check. After king h7, black is fully out of the woods. Black is fully out of the woods. Um, 
because white has no way to get the queen onto the eighth rank. And if he tries to sneak the queen to h4, then I return to d5. And actually, black is the one who's mating here because the white king has no escape all of a sudden. Um, so he goes queen f3 to kind of cover all the important squares. And here I made the decisive mistake, queen a1. Queen a1 was the decisive mistake. According to the engine, it appears that I could only hold the position by playing rook to c1. Which is not really human, I think, to give up the pawn like this. But apparently, queen c4 gives black enough counterplay to make a draw as the queen comes to f1. And black will have some sort of a perpetual there. But of course, I didn't really consider the idea of giving up the c6 pawn. And I also wanted to create an immediate threat against the king. So the other move that I considered was rook d2. This would have been better than the text move. But still, white has a big initiative after rook e8 and rook e7. And the attack continues. So why did I make this mistake? Well, this was based on a pure miscalculation. I spent the entire time calculating essentially queen takes c6, to be honest. And after queen takes f7, I assumed that I would have enough counterplay here after rook h2 check. I missed the idea of the zigzag king h2, king g3. Um, now, queen takes c6, I thought, is more logical. Why is it more logical? Because if black gives a check on g1, then white goes king h2. And the queen remains on this diagonal to stop further checks, and white is winning. Who can spot black's strongest move in this position? And according to the engine, black is actually winning already. I saw this move, and I was really hoping that he would go for this. Yeah, the, the idea is rook h1. This is an important type of idea. You cut the king off. And then the queen slides in either to f1 or to g1 with a devastating attack, and there's nothing white can do about it. This rook h1 move is easy to miss because you kind of assume that you have to give checks. And one important kind of trick in these positions is to figure out whether, in fact, your opponent is threatening anything. Like, you really have to know, do I have time to make a quiet move? And even though it looks like black's king is surrounded, the answer here is yes, because white is not actually threatening anything specific. So, queen takes f7, I completely underestimated rook g1, and now rook h1 and king g3. I had only calculated king f3, after which queen d1 check happens, and at least black, at the very least, black will have a draw. At the very least, black will have a draw. So, he, I thought he was repeating moves, but he actually goes to g3, and the thing is, I should have gone rook g1 check. But after king h4, this essentially transposes into the game continuation. And after queen c3, this was complete panic. And the game should have ended immediately. f3, rook g1, and king h2 would have forced resignation. Now, why did I panic here? Because let's say the black plays a random move. Let's say the black plays queen back to a1. Where is the mate? Thank you, formless fox. The mate is queen g8, queen h8, and now beautiful queen h4. This is really nice board geometry, and the king actually supports the queen. So that was the biggest threat. That was the threat I didn't see a defense against. And um, that's why, you know, I would have resigned after king h2. Now, it turns out that I can play queen takes c5. And white's winning sequence here is not a mate, but it is very pretty. So queen g8 check, king h6. Queen h8 check. King runs out to g5. It looks like black's king just might escape here. h4 check. King f4. But in this position, white has a beautiful winning move, which I think can come unexpectedly if all you're looking for is checkmate. But you actually can't only look for checkmate. You have to look for other stuff. And that other stuff is to realize that that rook on g1 is horribly undefended. If you can pry the queen away from c5, you win the game. So the move queen f8 check ends the game immediately. Queen takes f8, rook takes f8. King moves and you take the rook on g1. So I think this is a lovely move, queen f8 check. All right. Um, so perhaps I should have done that. I, I probably would have resigned after king h2. But amazingly, the guy goes king h4 and allows me to trade queens. Queen f6 check. And the game continues, but rook e6 is incredibly incredibly accurate 
because if he had gone rookie seven check, amazingly, white actually loses after king h6 and g5 mate is unstoppable. So just uh, lots of complications this game, but he goes rookie six. And the point is that if king h6 now, then he takes on f6 just in time to pin my pawn to the king. And if you go g5, then this is no longer checkmate, king h5. And you don't have time to get the rook to h3. So I have to defend the pawn. Now white is up two pawns, and the rest is very straightforward. He extricates his king from g3, uh, from h4. He trades a pair of pawns. In fact, h5 is very accurate. I thought this was impossible due to stalemate tricks, but I still have a pawn that's living on f6. And if I play f5, then he throws in a check on c6 and wins a third pawn, all of which are passed. And this was out of the question. So I tried to hold him down, but rook f7 is another incredibly accurate move, followed by rook f5, the final nail in the coffin. Or so it seems. If I take on f5, yes, white ruins the pawn structure, but it doesn't matter because he's up two pawns. King f7, and g4, h6, and black is in Zugzwang. So black has no choice but to give up the last pawn. And that's it. The rest is easy, obviously. You have to try this. It's always worth a dirty trick. Rook d7, rook e7. So for, notice what I'm doing. First, I'm going back and forth. Essentially, to get him to get him into an unsuspecting situation, he doesn't think that I'm all of a sudden going to go rook e7. He thinks I'm just going to shuffle between d7 and e7, a d7 and c7, and all of a sudden I go rook, rook e7. Obviously, he shouldn't have pre-moved. That was a very bad mistake. And now, uh, it's still a draw. His pawns are so far advanced that even my rook is not able to deal with them fully. But black is able to hold here. White is unable to promote the pawns because of the because there's always going to be side checks. And it's very nice that um, he tried to get the king around to h6, but now the move rook takes h7 is the most clinical, forcing white either to lose with king g5 or to take the pawn with a draw. So... Definitely, in my eyes, I lost this game. I got outplayed. But no shame in getting outplayed. I mean, the guy played on a on a 2700 level. Um, I really only made one mistake this entire game. Uh, maybe two. So my first mistake was to play queen c7 in the opening. And my second mistake um, was, to play, was to play the move um, queen a1. Apparently, rook c1 holds a draw, but this obviously isn't stockfish at a very high depth, so maybe more precise analysis would indicate other inaccuracies. Um, no, he just played a really good game. I think that everybody's good now, especially at this level. Yeah, it was a very impressive performance by my opponent, without a doubt. I think there were a couple of moves which were, which were quite impressive. I would point to the g4 move, which is far from intuitive, g4 and c5. Um, that was impressive. And then, obviously, the way that he played in the middle game, like b3, rook c1, rook c2. I mean, these were basically forced, but still. Takes on a4 and rook d2 was very testing. And then I think he, he found the accurate move order here. And then queen f3 actually is a very, very powerful move, at least practically speaking, because it poses tremendous challenges to black. Queen a1, and now, of course, he saw the way to zigzag the king outside of the checks. So the guy should have won, you know, deserved to win the game without a doubt. But it is what it is. These kinds of things happen. Yeah, his blitz rating is over 2,700, so uh, clearly a very powerful player. I think he definitely played like a GM. It's possible that he is a GM. I think it's actually quite likely that he is a GM. Um, maybe just not that strong at Blitz because he's a little bit on the slower side, as you could see. But when you give him a lot of time, um, his true strength comes out. Speedrun meets speedrun, entirely possible. <laughs> Very likely. All right. Um... All right, guys, I think we're going to call it. Um, it's been a really long week for me. I'm feeling pretty tired, and I'd like to take the evening off. Um, I did do I did do commentary later uh, earlier today. I'm also playing tomorrow at 1 o'clock. I am playing the, um, the Pro Chess League Arena 
for California. So be sure to tune in. I'll be playing from one to three and potentially um, if we get second or third place, I'll be playing the playoffs. I'm on a team with Min and Georg Meyer and a bunch of good people. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And I probably will stream later tonight. Uh, sorry, I'm. this is my mental state right now. I, I probably will stream tomorrow night. I'm thinking maybe around 8.39 p.m. Eastern. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for watching um, and appreciate the support. I'm going to raid. Yeah, let's raid. Um, Maybe we can raid Sabina or LaFong. Yeah, let's raid Sabina. Um, I, I don't think I've ever raided Sabina Foyzer. She is a, I think she's a WGM. Um, she's very strong and uh, I noticed she was streaming pretty frequently lately. So let's give her some love um, and I'll see you guys later. Raiding, raiding Sabina. Have a good rest of your weekend. Bye everybody. Thanks for hanging out.